Hello everybody, this is Dr. Harshita Thakur, Faculty, Odont Academy of Learning and today I'll be talking about principles of projection geometry. Now why we need to know about the principles of projection geometry is because as you can see here our tooth is a 3D object and whenever there's a disease associated with the tooth or its surrounding structure, we capture it in our x-ray films, okay, which is nothing but a 2D object. Now, to obtain maximal information from this 3D structure to, the, to a 2D object, we need to follow certain principles, okay? So, first principle says that we must use as small an effective focal spot size as possible. Now, what does it mean? You can see here there are two images. Let's call this as image A and the one on the right as image B. The difference between image A and image B is the size of this focal spot. Now in image A, the focal spot size, which is slightly smaller, the X-ray photons are originating from the edges, hitting the tooth here. And then after converging, they again tend to diverge and form the image. Okay. Now, Towards the end or in the periphery where these X-ray photons are diverging, they form something called as penumbra. Penumbra in radiology is nothing but the slight blurriness that we see in the periphery of a shadow. Now coming to image B, the focal spot size, which is slightly more than, focal, than the image A, the X-ray photons again originating from the edges from different directions, that is, they converge and hit the tooth and again they diverge and they hit the film. Now when they have hit the film, as you can see, the difference between image A penumbra and the Im penumbra in image B is slightly more. So what happens is there is more amount of blurriness in the image that is formed of a focal spot which has more or an increased size when that compared to that of image A. So uh, this is a radiographic uh, representation in which you can see that the one on the left is slightly blurred or unsharp than the one on the right. Okay, so this indicates that the focal spot size is slightly smaller than that of the image on the left. That is why we see the image on the right to be more clear. Next principle says that we must increase the distance between the focal spot and the object. Now that we have established that the size of the focal spot should be kept as small as possible, it says that the distance between this focal spot size and the tooth should be more. How we attain this distance to be more is by using a long cone open-ended technique. Now this long cone open-ended cylinder, what it does is it makes the X-ray photons travel either in a straight line or parallel to each other and thereby it reduces its divergence, okay? So the X-ray photons will hit the tooth and form the image. Again, thereby it will reduce the image unsharpness. If we use a short cone, the X-ray photons, as soon as they're out of the cone, they will tend to diverge. When they diverge, they will hit the film and that path will be slightly, it will have a higher penumbra than that of a long cone um, technique. Third principle says that we must minimize the distance between the object and the film. So even though in principle two it says that the distance between the focal spot and the tooth should be more, but the distance between the tooth and the film should be less. It should be as close as possible. Again, it is because of the fact that X-ray photons tend to diverge. So when they hit the tooth, okay, they tend to diverge. So if we place the X-ray film farther away, they will diverge more. 
and the penumbra or the image blurriness will again increase. So to order to reduce this blurriness or reduce the divergence of the X-ray photons, we have to keep the X-ray film closer to the tooth. But mind you, that doesn't mean that we place the X-ray film in contact with the tooth, which leads us to principle number four, which says that the position of the film should be or the long axis of the film should always be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Why this is done is because in this image, as you can see, the X-ray photons are coming, they hit the cusp of the tooth and they form an image, which is good on the receptor. But the X-ray photons that are hitting the root, since the film is not uh, in close contact with it, they have to uh, travel a farther distance and then form an image. So what happens is the X-ray photons will tend to diverge and it will lead to distortion of the image. Okay, so the uh, image will appear either more elongated or more foreshortened than its actual size. The fifth principle says that we must orient the central ray perpendicular to the long axis of the object as well as to the long axis of the film. Now, even though we have placed the film and the tooth parallel to each other, it is of no point if we don't keep the X-ray beam perpendicular to the both of these structures. Why? Again, it will lead to either elongation or foreshortening of the image if the vertical angulation is either decreased or increased respectively. The last principle states, states that whenever you are exposing the patient, there should be absolutely no movement of the tube of the film or that of the patient because it will obviously lead to haziness or blurriness of an image. So I hope the principles were clear to you of projection geometry. Now, uh, before we end this video, there is one phenomena which we all must know is that of the eggshell effect. Now, what really is eggshell effect is, um, to explain it in simple terms, uh, why do we see in a bone which is surrounding the tooth, the lamina dura as we call it in um, radiology terms, why does this appear more radio opaque than its other counterparts? Does that mean that the bone is hollow from the inside? No. Okay. It is because it can be explained with the help of an egg as we can see here. You can see the top surface of the egg. Okay. This is a more curved area of the egg than the, uh, than the area in the center, which is slightly linear. So what happens is this purple line indicates the X-ray photons. So when these X-ray photons are traveling, because it is a curved surface, they have to travel a longer path. So the X-ray photons are getting absorbed at this point, this point, this point, this point. Throughout this whole area, it is getting absorbed. Okay, so there is more attenuation at this area. Whereas in this particular area, which is this uh, vertical area, which is slightly small, the X-ray photons have to travel a shorter distance when compared to the area on the top. So obviously the final image that we get, this area on the top will appear more radio opaque than the one in the sides or in the corner. It is only because the X-ray photons have to travel a more longer or a tangential path. Okay, so they tend to get more absorbed and that is why we have this radio opacity that we see. Now it is not just localized or uh, just pertaining to this lamina dura. It can also be seen in a cystic lesion where the outer cortex or the periphery appears corticated. That doesn't mean that the inside portion is hollow. Or we can also see it in your, let's say, floor of the maxillary sinus, which appears like a radio opaque line. So I hope that was clear to you. And uh, before we end, there is a question that I have put up just to know that if you have understood the concept or not. And uh, if you know the answer to it, kindly comment below and uh, we will definitely get back to you with the explanation and with the correct answer. 
So the question is, while passing through matter, the intensity of the radiation is reduced. Now, why or this intensity reduction is called in radiology as attenuation, absorption, scattering or reduction? So we're waiting for your answer. Kindly do get back to us. Thank you so much.